moving to Mexico Monday. Um, I love that we get these and get to uh, dig in a little bit deeper to these topics that we don't typically get to cover when we're in our one hour meetings at, on the rooftop of La Serena back in the life before COVID. Um, oh, everyone's trying to join, hold on. Someone just come in. Okay, hello, if you just joined us. Um, so if, um, hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Kim Temple with Runaway Realty in Puerto Morelos, Mexico. And uh, normally I'm joined by my partner, Gabriel Ortega, but he is has a back injury that he's nursing. So mm. he's not going to be with us tonight. Um, and we also have with us Keith and Bruce, who are also Puerto Morelians who just purchased a home this year. And Pam, Pam just purchased a home this year. So they are actually um, very up on the topic that we're talking about tonight, which is what do you do after closing? If you bought a home in Puerto Morelos and the celebrations have died down, then you have to get down to the real bit of living life. And we're gonna talk about what you need to do to set up your new home in your life. And as I was getting ready for this, um, two things I wanted to tell you. One is that we're working on a move-in guide um, that I was hoping to have done for tonight so that you could download it and follow along and I didn't get it finished, but that will be out within the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye on our page for that. It'll be a great downloadable PDF. If you've looked at our Puerto Morelos Buyers Brainstorming Guide, it'll be the same kind of thing, tons of information and you'll be able to hold on to it. So if you don't catch something tonight, don't worry, I'm gonna include phone numbers and email addresses and all that kind of stuff in the move-in guide that's coming soon. But I also realize that there's a ton of information and we have like an hour. So we're probably not gonna get through all of it tonight. Please feel free to send me your questions. Please feel free to drop questions in the chat box, um, which you can access at the bottom of your screen. And I will try to get to those there. But I think tonight we're just gonna start with like the very most, the basic things and see how far we get. Um, I commented, I think it was Keith and Bruce that I, we had the discussion where I realized that because I've lived here now in Puerto Morelos for so long, it's been nine years or well, almost 10 years full time. I forget that things are so different here. I forget that y'all might not know that to get things done, you have to follow a truck down the street. I, I mean, I just, because this is life that I'm used to now, I forget how foreign it is to people who are just coming to live here for the first time. So um, so sometimes in a transaction, I, I don't realize how important that stuff is and my buyers are feeling very anxious because they don't have this information. So I think it's gonna be great to share it and to kind of calm your anxiety if you're wondering like, oh my God, what am I gonna do if I buy a house there, then what do I do? Um, and we'll just start from the beginning and mm -hmm. see where we get. All right, does that sound good? Anyone? Um, you, I think most of you are muted. If you have any questions, just drop them in the chat box and I'll try to get to them there. I do have kind of an outline that I wanna get through, but of course, if you have a burning question, stop me. We'll get to that. I'm sorry, somebody was talking. Um, oh, Suzanne says, is there a Puerto Morelos homeowner's guide for dummies? I mean, I think that's maybe kind of what my move-in guide will be. Um, unless you're asking like about how to take care of a house here. Is that what you're asking, Suzanne? Sorry, having technical difficulties. Yes, um, like things that we should know about taking care of a house in Puerto Morelos that we wouldn't necessarily know from taking care of a house in North America. We don't have a guide on that yet, but we, I mean, um, yeah, if you watch my our Facebook, we do send out information on getting your house ready for raining, rainy season and, you know, things kind of on a monthly basis to do okay. when taking care of your home. Perfect. But that's a good idea. We could put it all together and kind of release it. Like here are some things that you need to, to watch out for with your house. Awesome. Um, so thank you. That's good. I'll, let me just get on that one after I get this one. 
like you have nothing else to do no. i know <laughs> i don't know why this is what's taking so long but it is um okay so i think like the number one thing i want to say to you is when you're moving here keep in mind i know i've said this before i feel like i'm kind of a broken record that you're moving to another country you have to kind of drop your expectations that anything is going to work the way that you that it works at home. It just doesn't work that way here. And um, the more you cling to the, this is how it should be because this is how we've always done it, the more unhappy you're going to be. <laughs> so just accept that things are going to be different, accept that they may not make sense to you. And also accept that there's a lot of us here, a lot of expats here who have been through this process and we love to tell you about it. Go to any local, hangout joint and some expats going to be happy to tell you their story and to tell you what you should do and how you should do it. There's a really welcoming, nice community of expats here who are willing to help you walk through this process. And as we become a larger community, um, there's even companies that are being set up that would help you walk through these processes. One is, um, I'm going to forget the name, expat assistance. I think Cindy Van Houten has opened that with her husband, Edgar, which, and they're, bi I mean, he's bilingual. So that is a great um, thing that didn't exist before. They can help you walk through some of these processes that we're going to talk about today. And I'm sure there's other people, if you have a property manager, your property manager can help you. But the goal today is to just kind of give you the overview of how things are going to work and what you'll need to do, and then um, get you on your way and um, we'll meet again to continue talking about it. Um, we did in our previous moving to Mexico Monday, we talked about the things to do before you are making the move. And I don't want to recap that whole video, but I do want to remind you that one of the number one things that we told you, which you may think is silly, but it's not, is that you need to download WhatsApp on your smartphone. I know you're probably not familiar with it. <laughs> Seems the whole world is familiar with WhatsApp except for the US and Canada, but um, it's a free international calling texting app with secured messages and the ability to leave voice messages and video message video calling. Um, you can send your location with WhatsApp. It's super useful. Everybody uses it here. You almost can't get through life without it. So I wouldn't try. You're really going to want to have WhatsApp. So make sure that you have WhatsApp on your phone. It works on all kinds of phones. Um, so download WhatsApp please, before you get here. When you are buying a new property, you, when we get to the closing, unlike in, in the US and probably in Canada where the owner has turned off the utilities, in our case, the utilities are going to be on. You're going to have water, you're gonna have electricity. And if you've, made a point of it during the negotiations, which I would, you'll probably also still have internet turned on. Um, that is great because those are the things that people seem a little overwhelmed about getting those things done. So we don't have to do those ahead of time. You don't have to be ready to go on closing day. It's all going to be working for you. The electric company and water and internet company don't care who's paying the bill. They don't need you to change the name on the account right away. They only care that it's being paid. So what you will get in the closing process is copies of the last bills for those items. Um, and that will be important because you can use that account number to pay the bill. And then you're also going to use it when you decide to go and change the name on the bill. Is that um, true also if it's new construction? No, if it, well, it depends on what your builder has done. So okay. if your builders are, well, probably they already have electricity set up, so yes. Um, do you know about Selva Escondida? I don't. No? Okay. Yeah. Um, our electricity is provided by a government-owned utility commission. I always forget this. Commission Federal Electricidad or something like that. Um, and we just call it CFE, the initials of the company. Uh, it is billed every other month in two month increments. So um, we have a billing cycle. Let's see, there's one, there's December, February, 
April, end of April, beginning of May, July, goes like that. Usually, depending on your neighborhood, the bills are due at the first of the month, but in some of the gated communities, their bills are due a little later than they are in the town. So you'll just wanna watch your bill to see when it's due. Um, the other fun fact is that they don't, um, well, we don't have mail delivery, which we've covered in another moving to Mexico Monday as well, but let me just back up with that. There's, there's no mail service in Puerto Morelos. There's not regular postal delivery. So what they do is hand deliver your bills. This is very common and it's been happening for years. The utilities send out people who ride around on their little bikes or motorcycles and they will stick the bill either in your mailbox if you have one in the front of your house or in your gate or they'll throw it over your wall, but somehow they will deliver your bill unless they don't. And even if they don't deliver your bill, it's still due. <laughs> so sometimes nobody, we just don't get our bills. Um, luckily now we have the internet and you can look up your bill and see how much you owe and figure out a way to pay it. Um, but the easiest way and, and the way we all did it for many, many years was you would get the actual paper bill that they would throw over your wall and you would take it to OXO, which is the store of everything. You need to know what the OXOs are going to be important in your life. And they will scan the barcode and you would pay them cash. Now we have a lot more options for paying um, CFE. You can pay it online. You can, if you have a Mexican bank account, you can set up to pay from there. You can pay with an app called Paga Mobil, P A G A M O B I L, or CFE has an app that you can put on your phone and enter your contract number. They'll tell you how much to do, and you can pay it there. So we have a lot more options for payment of electricity than we used to. Um, if you miss the due date, though, you're not going to be happy because CFE has an office in like every town except Puerto Morelos. So if you've missed the due date on your bill, you're going to be driving to Cancun or Playa del Carmen to pay either at um, these handy machines, which would be great to have in Puerto Morelos, but they don't. It's like an ATM. You, I think, do you, has anyone... I haven't used it recently. I don't know if you key in the number or if it scans your barcode on your bill, um, but it tells you how much you owe. You can feed it cash or use a credit card and pay that way, or you need to go to a CFE office. There are several CFE offices around Cancun and Playa. Um, so it's just better not to miss the due date on the bill. You don't want to have an extra trip. Um, one fun fact is that if you go, if you've missed your due date and you go pay at the automatic CFE electric ATM thing, they don't, they haven't calculated the late fee. They don't show you that you owe a late fee there. So if you pay that and you don't put a little extra money, they're going to turn off your electricity. Just had it happen in two months ago. We paid ours two days late. We had a six peso. Um, late fee, which didn't show up on the machine, and they came and turned off our electricity. So that's no fun, because then you have to go through the whole getting it set up again. So if you're late, go to the machine or go to a CFE office, but pay, I would pay like 100 pesos extra just to get it on your, get a credit on your account, so that when they take the late fee out, you don't have the same problem that we did. Any questions about electricity? When you decide that you want to go ahead and change the name on the account, you are going to need to provide, um, you're gonna to go to a CFE office in Cancun and you're going to give them your, a certified copy of your title that you'll receive about a week to 10 days after your closing. You're gonna take the last bill and your passport and or if you have a Mexican ID, you're gonna take that as well and you'll fill out some paperwork. Actually, Keith and Bruce, did you guys already do this? Yeah, we did it recently, Kim, and it took us two tries. The first uh, office we went to in Cancun, we had our certified copy of the deed with us, but not a copy of it to leave with the CFE office. I didn't think they would want a copy of all 32 pages of the deed, but in, indeed they did want a copy of all 32 pages of the deed. Uh, so we didn't have everything we needed. 
on that first trip. So I went back recently and I actually went with Edgar, uh, hired him to go with me. And uh, he took me to a different office in Cancun than the one I went to the first time. And they asked for nothing. Uh, they looked at my <laughs> immigration card. I think the only thing they wanted to see was my immigration card. And I think that was basically because the guy was having a hard time spelling my name when he was entering into the, into the computer. So you might see differences from one office to the next or one person you deal with to the next person about what they want. Uh, rule of thumb that we've learned since we've been here, we have a folder full of every piece of paperwork that we think someone could conceivably ask us for. And we just take it all with us because it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. That is good advice. It's all about the paper here. Um, oh, that's interesting that they didn't, then they didn't ask to see your stuff. How strange. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that is probably, I should have put that up front. That is a good um, rule of thumb is to just be aware that things probably don't happen on the first trip. <laughs> There's, even though they've given you a list of things they want, somehow magically there appears another thing that's not on the list and that no one told you about. Um, it's, it's just the way things are. I, in 2000, 13, we, there was no bank in Puerto Morillo, so I had to go to Cancun to open my account, and it took four trips to Cancun to get a personal checking account open, and I didn't walk away with a debit card. I had to wait like three weeks for that to be mailed to me um, with the, you know, we don't really have mail, so it had to come by special delivery, and you had to be at your house. They don't tell you when they're coming, but you had to be at the house. It, it's just, it's a chore. Um, so I always joke, there's like, there's no quick errands in Mexico, it seems. You're gonna just allow some time <laughs> and schedule in like tacos and beer before or after to relax yourself. Um, I think that's it on CFE. Do you guys have any questions on electric? Oh, I can say one more thing about that real quick. Uh, when we, and I don't know if this happens all the time, probably not, maybe I shouldn't even say anything, but when we switched it over to our name, they switched our meter out also. Oh. Uh, yeah. So they gave us a piece of paper with a code number written on it. And we had to attach that to our meter in front of our house. So when they come around, they can see which ones are supposed to be swapped out. And we actually got a brand new meter. But I, I can't imagine they do that every time the name changes. Maybe it's just something they're doing right now. Oh, interesting. OK, anybody else? Hey Kim, I have a quick question. Do so oh. when you guys went to the office to change out the billing, did they speak English or do you need to bring somebody with you if you? Uh, no, and the the first office, we, both offices we went to were in in Cancun. The first time we went, we went to a smaller office. We took a friend with us who is American but speaks better Spanish than either one of us do, and they were like super strict. Like they stopped us at the door, and a lot of this has to do with with COVID. Uh, but they stopped us at the door and uh, they said, you know, you, someone needs to speak Spanish, uh, which we got the same thing when we registered the car. They stopped you at the door and they're, they're basically saying, if you don't speak Spanish, you're not coming in. Uh, so they said someone needs to speak Spanish. And then they were very strict about two people couldn't be at the desk with the representative at the same time. Uh, and then the second time we went, uh, I took somebody with me who who is offering their services, uh, you know, for this sort of thing, uh, who is Mexican, and he took me to a different office, and they were much less uh, strict about things there and a lot friendlier. Uh, but again, we needed to have somebody with us that spoke Spanish. Yeah, and there's not. I don't. I'm not aware of any businesses or utilities where they regularly speak English. <laughs> you're, you're always going to need to have a little Spanish or have someone with you who speaks Spanish. Um, okay, well, the other thing that you will need to be aware of in your new home is um, water. And the water utility in Puerto Morelos is called Aguacan. And Aguacan provides, you know, service from the street. Uh, water is metered and billed on a monthly basis. And again, they drive around and stick a bill in your mailbox or throw it over your wall. Um, and 
They, so I, I, I'm looking at my notes because in my notes, I say that they don't have online billing, but I just went to their website today and it appears that they're getting, are they rolling that out now? Yeah, yeah. so actually, go ahead. KR is online and have been for the last several months. Okay, so, and you can, you can download your bill to see how much you owe on there? Yes. Okay, all right, so that's new and that's great because Agua Khan used to be way behind the ball on this stuff. So, um, Agua Khan is located on the road, you know, from the beach to the highway, just past the go mart towards the highway. Um, and they have a little ATM thing outside the office where you can pay your bill there as well. So you can go in, you can pay at the ATM, you can pay at any OXO. You can, I believe you can pay at Shadrawi, you can pay from your Mexican bank account with an automatic transfer. And it sounds like you can pay online on the Agua Khan, um, website, you'll set up an, an owner's account there. Um, what a lot of people do because water is so inexpensive, I mean, it's usually like maybe 20 bucks a month. A lot of people who aren't, who maybe spend the high season here and then leave for the rest of the year, just go by the Aguacan office with a big chunk of money and pay in advance and get a credit on their account so they don't have to worry about dealing with it when they're not here. Um, and they're fine with that. You just They'll just bill against that credit that you've left with them. You can also do that with electric, um, but more often I hear of people doing it with the water. Um, if you are in a gated community like Punta Vista, Punta Arena, Regatta, they're providing water to you. They're not using Aguacan. They have wastewater treatment plants and they have well water. So you're not going to receive a bill from the, you're not going to be in the public utility system. You'll get be getting bills privately. And in fact, in I think in all of those complexes right now, that's just part of your association fee. So you're not paying separately. You're not being metered separately for water and paying separately for water. Eventually that's going to change because as more properties are built, you know, they'll need to do that. But right now they're all, um, it's just included in your association fee. When you want to change the name on the water bill, you'll go through a very similar process as we do with CFE. You'll take a certified copy of your deed, your ID, the last water bill, and they also want a picture of your house and a picture of the meter. I, my understanding is you can show that to them digitally on your phone, um, but you might wanna email it to yourself and print it out just in case. Did you have to take a picture, Keith and Bruce? I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was typing a comment and, and fussing at the cat at the same okay. time. Uh, we've not done the water yet because okay. for Agua Khan, you have to, they won't take the uh, certified copy of the deed. Is that correct? Well, I think that's what I told you and that's what I believed until now somebody's just told me they did it with their certified copy. Oh, well. So I. Yeah, I couldn't find, um, we tried to download the requirements off the website today and couldn't get it to go, but um, my understanding is that you can do it with a certified copy now. We will try it and report back. Okay, but that they did ask for a photo of the house and a photo of the meter. Um, so any questions about Aquacon? No? All righty, we're moving right so, along. Sorry, Kim, that's just tap water, right? That's, yes, that's not drinking water. So that's the water that you'll use for showering, you know, flushing your toilet and um, all that kind of stuff. And for drinking water, might as well segue into that real quick. For drinking water, um, unless you have a water treatment system in your house, like a water softener, you're not going to be drinking the water in your house you're going to be on bottled water. Um, there's many ways to get bottled water here. It's delivered in these large um, 20, are they 20 liters? The Garifones, the large jugs, yeah. Um, they're 20 liter bottles called Garifones and they are delivered by truck throughout the village. There's a local company called La Ceiba, um, which makes the rounds. There are some bigger companies, Cristal, uh, Epura, Bonafonts, who also have trucks that circulate around the village. Um, so 
your best bet is to ask your neighbors when the water trucks come by, figure out which kind you like and uh, be aware of their schedule so you can grab some water. They deliver it and oftentimes for a tip, you can have them bring it on in and, and put it in the house or have them store it wherever you wanna store your water. It is a good idea now that we're talking about water to have some extra water on hand um, because in the summertime when we have rainy season and tropical storms and hurricanes, if a hurricane is headed our way, there's a run, just like with any other storm event, people go to the store and start stocking up. Um, there's usually a run on water and you wanna get that well in advance because uh, they're gonna turn off the power before the storm gets here and the store won't reopen until the power's back on and they've repaired any damage. So it's best not to get stuck without some water. So keep some extra Garaphones on hand um, at your house at all times. <laughs> if you need um, to switch those out and the truck's not around, you can switch out at OXO. I think OXO, OXO does Cristal and Epura. They might do Bonafon as well. Um, Shadrawi, you can switch out jugs or just buy, you know, small, you don't have to buy the huge jugs all the time. You can always buy water there. Um, but yeah, the, People ask me about um, the in-house water purifying systems. I think they're great. I think they've come down in price now. And so they seem to be, uh, a lot more people seem to be doing those, either the reverse osmosis, or I'm not sure what the other kind is called. Um, but just water softener systems seem to be becoming more popular and more feasible in the houses. You can also set up your, if you have a refrigerator that has a water dispenser, you can, if you have an empty cabinet space next to it, you can put your Garifone there and hook it up with a pump so that it automatically feeds to the refrigerator. You can make ice and also just dis dispense water from your fridge. Um, so fun ways to get around the ugly Garifone. Any questions about that? Oh, Donna yeah. says, even with water softener, don't drink the water. Oh, does it taste bad? Or it is bad, Donna. It is bad. Um, okay. Doing the testing, it still has the particles and the bacteria, even though you run it through the softener, because we do have the softener and the carbon, and still is not at a level where you would drink. Oh. Uh oh. So bottled water. <laughs> bottled water to drink. I water. cook with. I cook with it. And, and, you know, if I'm boiling something, everything else, mm -hmm. but if I'm just mm -hmm. drinking the water, definitely just the Garifone. Um, one thing that people ask about um, when you get like fruits and vegetables here, a lot of people soak the fruits and vegetables in the tap water and add some stuff called microdyne, which is some kind of iodine solution, I think, that kills the stuff on the fruits and vegetables. I, we do that every time we buy them. Some people don't, but I have a bad tummy, so I kind of don't want to risk it. Um, some people soak the produce in bottled water. I don't know, what do you, what do you guys do, the people that live here? Um, you just don't want to buy the produce and use it and just, yeah, yeah. Microdyne. Microdyne? Yep. If it's something with a peel, I just wash it with a little bit of dish soap. Yeah. And tap water. I'm usually getting it all at once, so I just dump it all in the sink with microdyne and do it all. Even yeah. if it has a peel, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and I usually just soak it for like 15 minutes. I don't know. And I don't, obviously, you don't rinse it again because you don't want to get that water on it. But it seems to work pretty well. I'm just trying to see if I missed something here on the chats. Where do you get the microdyne? Microdyne you can get at any of the grocery stores um, in many, many different sizes. Costco, of course, has a huge bottle, but you can get it at um, the Shadrawi or Super Key. It's usually in the produce section. Somewhere near the produce, yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, back to the basics, gas. 
Uh, we don't have gas delivery from a gas utility. We don't have delivery through the streets. So everyone um, either has a stationary gas tank at their home or they have the gas, the large gas canisters that are exchanged. Um, there are several gas companies who service those different types of containers of gas. So once you figure out what you have, you'll figure out which company can either fill it or switch it out for you. And you don't really have a, like a contract with them. You, you get it on an as needed basis. So um, in our move in guide, we'll have the phone numbers for those places. You do need to watch your gas levels though, because an order, a refill or a switch before you run out, because it can often take a few days for them to get to you. They're not located in Port Morelos. They're usually coming from Cancun or Playa and it's not instant gratification. So you don't call on one day and get usually get the gas service. Um, you will be very familiar with them though because they have their own distinctive sounds. <laughs> um, Zeta Gas has Zeta, Zeta, Zeta Gas. Um, the other Sony Gas has a really distinctive clanking sound that's very loud because they're trying, you know, they they drive through the neighborhoods and they're trying to get your attention so you come out and flag them down if you want to have gas. Um, they do still use those, even though now you can call and make an appointment and have and tell them that you need gas and they'll make their way to your house. But um, um, but you will become very familiar and at under you know hearing the noises and you're like oh that's the gas truck that's the water truck that's the bakery guy. Um, but that's life in Mexico, right? Very traditionally. Um, okay, any question about the gas? One thing about the gas, Kim, if you're using the cylinders, you can keep two at your house instead of one. I, you may have just said that our internet froze up for a, okay. a minute, so I apologize. Uh, if you keep two, then when you run out, you can just go out back and you take it off the one and put it on the new one because it, invariably your gas is going to run out when you're in the middle of cooking dinner or okay. something. So That's a good idea. And then, How about just barbecue propane tanks? So those, I don't think you can fill those in Port Morelos. Does anyone know anything different? I've always heard you have to go to some place by the airport in Cancun to fill those. Jim? Yeah, we bought an empty canister at Costco and located a place where we could drive to in Cancun and they filled it okay. kind of like filling your gas tank in your car. Very close to the airport. Yeah, it was close to the airport. Oh. So it is the place by the airport, yeah. Yeah, um, it was another adventure. <laughs> and you found it, that's impressive. Yeah, we found it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know of any place in town that fills those little tanks. No, no, there's no- No, but if you get to know your gas guy, you can put your address on it and some of them have the ability to fill it and bring it back to you. Yeah. Well, that was my question on the cylinders because I've never had that system. Do you put your name on, like, do you own the cylinder or do they own the cylinder? No, no, it's just an exchange thing. So it's not worth buying a brand new one because you're not going to get your brand new one back. So when you first set up, you go ahead and buy two from them. It will be a little bit more expensive because you technically buy the canisters the first time. Uh huh. And then as number one runs out, you put on number two and then catch them to refill the one they had. They'll just take that one, bring a full one off the truck that same exact time. So don't okay. go spending money on brand new ones. Okay. I wondered it's if you like put your name pain. on them or something. Though. No, trying okay. to get your own back is just, it, it'll take days and it never happens. Okay. It's not worth it. That's good to know. So on those cylinders, can you, is there a way to tell how much is left? Can you monitor the gas <laughs> level? And that Home Depot, you can buy these little strips, you put it on the outside. Gary says there's a strip you can get at Home Depot that's supposed to tell you the level. You you put it on the outside of the tank. You put it, it on the cell, outside. Cellophane strip and it changes color. It changes color oh. as you're running out of gas. I've never used it, so I don't know. We have the big tank with the pressure gauge on it that tells us, but I don't know. The, the, yeah. strips, I would always, the strips aren't I would very accurate. They have two. If you're using the, the tall 30s, just have two of them. 
What did you say, Jim? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The, the strips aren't very accurate. I've, I've got no. those here in Minnesota and they, they don't work very well. So yeah, yeah. Have, to, have another one handy, you know, because it, it'll run out about the time you want to do that steak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's good to know. Thank you guys. We, we have a stationary tank and we, it's not on the roof so that we can kind of, we can monitor it pretty easy. But I've heard if you have it on your roof, there are, um, I, I'll ask Gabrielle the name of it. There is a device that you can use on your phone to tell you what your gas level is. So you don't have to send someone up the roof to try to figure out when you need to have it refilled, um, which could be very handy. We uh, have a device, Kim, we got a device and I don't remember what it's called, but it's um, actually, they hung it on our wall downstairs. So you can be able to gauge what the gas is on the road. Okay. And it wasn't very much. It was pretty inexpensive to have that installed. The gas, the company that did the work did all of that. Okay. So gas monitoring device, I need to figure out the name of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't no, know it's the okay. name of it. <laughs> that no, it's okay. jig. <laughs> I'm learning. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then so for those of you who do the cylinders, do do the gas guys come every day? Are they in town every day or do you are there certain days that they're in town? Hit or miss. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um all right. listen, listen for that little jingle and you yeah, know. follow the truck. <laughs> follow I the do truck. think that's really pretty good advice here. Um for a lot of things, you need to find the truck. Um if you have your electricity goes off and you're waiting for CFE and you've called it in, um, oftentimes you're just going to want to drive around town and try to find the truck. Be very polite. Ask them if they've got your work order. Give them a little tip to see if they'll come to your house and look at it. Same thing with the gas. If you put, if you placed an order, and even if you haven't, if you find them on the truck, sometimes if you are asked nicely, they'll detour and come fill your thing for a small propina. Also you might want to um, chime in. Certain gas companies are not allowed to service in Well, they're not allowed sure, to like from I didn't hear you, sorry. Oh, Gary's just talking to me about different ones that can service different places, but if they're already in town, then they must be able to do in town, but we don't have anybody that drives around the gated allotments. You have to oh. sort of get your own person and WhatsApp, there you go. WhatsApp okay. your your gas guy and say, I'm out of gas and they'll be there in the next couple of days. And then do you pay them cash or can they yes. take cards? Okay. Uh, we've always paid them cash. We use Zeta Gas because we have a stationary tank and they have the truck that fills it and they will take cash or they'll take your debit card right there at the, at the truck, um, which is handy. Okay, any questions about that? Moving on to the exciting topic of trash. I know that's on everybody's mind. Um, trash pickup is provided by the municipality. It's part of what you pay for in your property taxes. When it's working correctly, they come by every day. Um, but when they're on strike or they run out of gas, or I don't know, there seems to be lots of reasons. The weather's bad. Um, breaks down. Something breaks down. They uh, aren't there every day. So, um, but typically they come around every day. And that's, that's outside of the gated communities. Inside many of the gated communities, they have kind of local neighbor, like dumpsters around the area and they have pickup days for those dumpsters. Um, but when you're outside a gated community, just in a little house, wherever you are, you're gonna put your trash out and they'll come by every day to pick it up. They do um, work very hard and they do like tips. So if the trash guys are coming around and you're hearing a lot of racket and you're wondering what it is, it's them pounding on your door trying to get you to come out and give them a tip. <laughs> so consider doing that. They're working very hard in very hot weather. Um, we usually, I think we tip probably 20 pesos. If, if we have put a bunch of stuff out, like the gardener just cut down a bunch of trees or whatever, cut back a bunch of bushes or something, extra stuff that's not typical or not in bags, we will always make sure where somebody is around and we will give them a tip to take it. Otherwise they're gonna ignore it and say, screw you lady, 
well, when, when you give me a tip, I will take the stuff for you. Um, and you always want to remember them around the holidays as well. A lot of people leave gifts out for the for the trash guys or give them food or money or whatever. They, they appreciate everything. Um, and we appreciate, I'm sure they're not making much money doing this pretty hard demanding job. So um, any questions about the trash? They have a bell too, right? Do they have a bell? I, I thought like everybody made fun of me at some point. I was like, oh, an ice cream truck. And it was a garbage. A trash bell. <laughs> Maybe, I guess I, I don't know, I'm not. Yeah, I think I think I heard a bell on 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 the one guy. Yeah. It was either that or his backup beeper had had. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it sounded like an ice cream truck. And yeah, the opposite, right? <laughs> Doesn't smell like an ice cream truck. Yeah. No, so um, they don't have curbside recycling in Puerto Morelos yet. I think you know eventually that's going to happen. So, but we do have recycling and it happens every other week in the Colonia. I don't know that the location has a name. It's near the sports dome on Zatina Gasca, but I, does anyone know if that place has a name? We're not aware of it. I think it's the sports field. Sports in, field? Yeah, right between Villas La Playa and Villas Dos on, on Zatina Gasca. Delphine and Zina Zatina Gasca. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you would on the, I think it's usually a Saturday morning, the pickup trucks are there, you will take your stuff there. They'll sort through it and take it for recycling. What, what, is, is, a, what is accepted on recycle? Someone else is going to have to answer that question. I don't know. Uh, I should know. I don't know. And I had an, uh, an infographic about it. I, I can look and see if I can find it real quick. Uh, I, I think it's cardboard and glass and plastic, but no metal. There's like a, the fourth, fourth, the plastic, glass, cardboard, metal. There's one of them that they don't take. And I can't remember now which, which one it is. Every, every time the municipality sets up a recycling day, they do post that infographic though. So if you go to the Facebook page of the municipality, you'll find it. It usually gets shared in the groups. Um, but I will add that to the move-in guide. I'll track that down. Hey, Kim. Is Kim, I was wondering uh, in, if you know or if anybody that lives in a development knows if uh, the municipality or the HOA or the development uh, picks up garbage in those uh, areas. It's, it's the municipality comes into the gated communities but they have big dumpsters around, so they're not picking it up on, well, of the ones that I know of, they're not picking it up curbside, you're taking it to a dumpster. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, one more thing, there is a company that will come pick up your PET plastic cardboard and cans, um, Collecta Caracol, and you can call them and make an appointment, they'll come to your house and pick it up for recycling. Almost as fun as trash is sewage. <laughs> <How's> that? <laughs> sewage is an interesting topic in Puerto Morelos. Um, until very, very, very recently, we were all on septic systems on the port side. Um, well, and in the Colonia, although the Colonia has had a treatment plant um, for a while, and we've just gotten one on the port side. Um, the infrastructure is in, the treatment plant has been built, but not every property is hooked up to the sewage lines yet. Um, so many people remain on um, septic systems. So that is an ongoing process. If you're in lucky enough to be in a gated community, they, Punta Arena, Punta Vista, all those Aldea communities, Regatta, they have their own water, wastewater treatment plants. So you're not on septic there. You, you're, they're all hooked up, everything's under the ground, you don't have to think about it. But what I'm told, and maybe uh, Donna can speak to this, is that I don't think you're, so, you're still not supposed to flush your um, toilet paper, even if you're hooked up to the wastewater treatment plant. Is that Yes, true? we can flush toilet paper. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes, we can. 
Yeah, they told us no at Punta Arena, but I don't know if that was just out of habit because they're. Um, I don't know about Punta Arena. It's got so much more population than some of the other ones. So maybe it it is no toilet paper, but in Punta Vista, we can. Okay. Interesting. Um, so the, the future is that we will all be hooked up to a wastewater treatment system, but that may or may not change the fact that we are not supposed to be flushing toilet paper because the plumbing is so delicate and I guess small here. Um, yeah. So there's no, right now, there's no separate charge for being on the sewage system that's included in your property taxes. They are charging you to hook your house up to the system. You'll have to pay a private contractor to do that. Um, I'm told it's not super expensive, depending on where your septic system is now and how they have to configure the plumbing, but that's on you. They've already put it in the street and you have to figure out a way to hook up to it. Any questions about that? Um, <clears throat> pardon me, yes, I do. So do you mean only people that have their house built or if it's a new house that you have to have it hooked up? Otherwise it's already done. Like if you're in a gated community or in an older house, it's already hooked up. If you're in a gated, if you're in one of the gated communities like Punta Arena, Punta Vista, Regatta, Aldeas, all those Aldeas, and I'm, I think, and anywhere in the Colonia, you're already hooked up to a sewage system. Okay. If you're outside of that, on the port side, you need to pay to have your property connected. Okay. Thank you. Does, so is anyone in the Colonia can tell me, is there a, there's a treatment plant over there, correct? I feel like- Yeah, it's right down the street from our house. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so everybody's on, because those are much newer properties, everybody's on in the sewage system there. I think so. I, I, I don't think these houses have septic tanks over here. And I have heard that you can flush the toilet paper uh, in the Colonia also. Oh, so, well, that's we funny. Do. We don't. Uh, <laughs> I've heard you can. Okay. Um, a lot of times uh, people get confused about um, what, what your address is. So when you buy a property or move into a property, the addresses look very different than what you're used to, a more typical U.S. or Canadian address. Um, I'm going to just show you what the format of it is. Oh, you guys can see this. Is that backwards or frontwards? No, no you're look, good. You're good. Okay, so I'll just read through it. This is a fake address. Um, SM is Super Manzana, and that means master block. MZ is Manzana, which is block. L is for lot, which is lot. And then you put the street, in this case, Avenida Nino Zeroes, Puerto Morelos. Our state is Quintana Roo. And then Mexico and our postal code is 77580. So it looks very different than what many of us are used to. And if you live in a gated community or a condo complex, you're going to also have an identifier of your unique unit. In the gated communities, they often have, um, I'm not sure all of them have this conjunto and conjunto and lot, in addition to the super manzana and manzana of the whole complex. Um, Donna, what does your address look like? Do you have all that? We have the conjunto, but when we were in regatta, we did not. Yeah, I think it's so weird. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So so in in regatta, they use super manzana and then manzana and loto lote, and then here we use super manzana conjunto lote. No, oh, up. Oh, sorry, up. Yeah. 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 So it's weird. Yeah, it is weird. So because addresses are weird <laughs> and because um, oftentimes Google Maps doesn't work even if you try to input this information, that is when WhatsApp comes in really handy. If you're having anything delivered, 
from FedEx or Amazon or you know someone sending you something via DHL, when you do the instructions, you'll put the address in and then there's always a, a spot to put the delivery instructions or something like that. Make sure you put your phone number there. The delivery driver will call you. He's got WhatsApp and you can just send him your location on WhatsApp and they'll be able to find you without trying to do the address. Because the address doesn't really make sense. There's nothing on the street that says, this is Super Manzana Dose and Manzana Cinco. Um, even your house number may not be your lot number. A lot of, especially over here in the, on the port side, houses have these random numbers that have nothing to do with the lot number. So telling someone your address is often not a helpful way to help them find you, <laughs> which can be very frustrating. Um, so another reason that you should have WhatsApp because you can send your location so easily with that. Any questions about the address? Kim, one uh, thing that I always do that I think is helpful, I, I maybe it's not, I don't know, uh, if we're having food delivered or furniture delivered or, or whatever, if I'm doing on WhatsApp, is I send the person a picture of the house. Oh, Just yeah. to help them find it. Yeah, I do that too with the office. I just keep it on my phone and in that so it's a good idea i'm putting that in my notes um what other questions do you guys have i need to hear someone else talk for a minute <laughs> yeah. say kim uh one thing i've always been confused by is um people try to explain a location and they don't put a pin on a map or they don't give you that weird address that uh, is the actual location, but they try to explain it by across from or near something and refer to something. And it's like, well, what is that something? <laughs> so that be, I find very difficult to uh, locate something the way most people seem to explain where something is. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Does anybody understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, well, imagine Dave, we didn't have street signs until pretty recently too. So it used to be like, oh, you know, it's on Rojo Gomez by where Bob used to live when Bob and his wife, Julie live in that house, but then they sold it to you know, that house, but then you turn left. Like that is how people used to give directions. So at least we have street names now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, because we don't have addresses that are easily locatable, people are resorting to other methods. My husband is one of them. And I'm always like, just in the, I'm like, anytime he orders, just send the WhatsApp location. Like stop trying to explain where it is. <laughs> he loves to try to explain and he uses different landmarks than I would, you know? We all have our own landmarks that we know here, but they're not all the same. And not everybody knows what those uh, landmarks are and where they are. Yeah. I, I, use, I use beach bars. <laughs> How does I, have that question, I have a question that's a little bit off topic, but on topic. Um, do you know what um, right now what the square foot price is for a new construction in that area? In which area? I'm sorry, in, in, in Muelos, in Puerto. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it can range from like 80 to to $100 per square foot. Wow. Okay. That's for no matter where you're building, whether it's closer to town or farther away from town. Well, that's a range. We actually have a, um, a Moving to Mexico Monday on that. There's an Ask a Builder. If you look on our YouTube channel, there's a whole thing about building and the cost of construction. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, that might be helpful to do. Because um, it really depends on... Well, part of it depends on what you're building on and the quality of finishes that you select and what kind of builder you use, but mm -hmm. it could be wide range. Okay, all right. Of, of costs. Cool, no, thank you. Sure, of course. What else, guys? Kim, I just have a few more minutes, so go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know about the gated communities or the beach side, but in the Colonia, uh, when you buy a house, it seems like a lot of the streets have their own uh, 
WhatsApp group. The neighbors have a, a oh. WhatsApp group. So it's kind of nice if you can meet some of your neighbors and get them to add you to the WhatsApp group and then you get announcements about what, uh, about you know what's going on. And I have heard uh, that sometimes maybe they go a little overboard as far as security <laughs> is concerned. Like uh, I heard, we heard this story where somebody came to visit somebody and there was this quote unquote strange car parked on the curb. And so somebody asked on the WhatsApp group, whose car is this? And nobody answered within five minutes. So they were like ready to call the cops and have it towed or, so sometimes it goes a little bit too far maybe, but it's a really good way to stay connected to your neighbors and uh, help make sure that your area is secure. That's a great idea. Yeah, I think most neighborhoods, especially after the closed the shutdown, a bunch of those formed, and I think they were really helpful. So thank you. Ari, uh, Punta Vista has the same thing, the WhatsApp group for everybody that lives in the gated community here. Yeah, that's nice. I have a question about internet. Can you um, talk about the better companies and how to get that set up if it isn't already set up? Well, there's two major companies, Telmex and Izzy. And depending on where you are, we'll, that will tell you which, they're not available in all areas. So it really depends on where you're gonna be. Um, Telmex offers fiber optic service in some areas and Izzy is supposed to be doing that, although I don't think they've rolled that out yet. Um, there's also Internet Cancun, if you're in an area not serviced by Telmex and Izzy. Um, so it's, it's really area specific what you're gonna use. But the ones that I know of, which are Telmex, Izzy and uh, Internet Cancun, you would start by setting things up online. You would go to their website and enter your information, request a contract and they come out in a few days. Um, okay. Set it up for you. Okay, thank you. Sure. Has anyone used, there's a new one called GigNet that I'm hearing about. Has anyone used that internet? I, we don't have, we have uh, Itzy at the rental house and right now we're setting up Telmex at our house. Uh, and I did talk to somebody about GigNet and GigNet seems to offer some pretty uh, impressive speeds. I don't know if they really deliver on it or not. Uh, I heard that they were having a hard time getting their installations done because they were running out of hardware. Uh, oh. And then somebody was also saying that with any of the antenna services that, you know, even if it's just kind of a breezy day that you might have some service disruptions, but that's all just what people have told me. I, I, I don't know firsthand. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think anybody delivers the speed that you are paying for. In my experience, <laughs> yeah. Well, the first day it's super lightning fast, and then the guy <laughs> disappears, and then it the speed disappears. Um, yeah, I think Telmex we're paying like I, I, some like for three hundred whatever, like a lot, and I think we regularly get maybe fifty on a good day. Um, so that would be another piece of advice. I would pay for more than like think, oh, I don't need 100 gigs. You probably do because you really want to get 30. Um, yeah, 50, 50 sounds really good. Our AC here at the rental house, we run around nine yeah. for the down. Yeah, that's it, how it's it was at my house for many years. Yeah, it's gotten better and it, it continues to get better. I mean, the service will only continue to get better, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do, I mean, uh, well, I guess that's not internet. Do, is there satellite internet? I feel like I've heard of that. Um, I don't know. All right, guys. I don't think we're going to get much further with this tonight. So we'll have to schedule another one where we go through kind of paying bills and um, let's see what else we have on here. Where to get furniture, where to pay your property taxes opening up a bank account. Anything else you guys have suggestions of things you want to learn about? No? Sorry. It no, would but be nice. It doesn't necessarily relate to just a home buying or, you know, but um, any information about car, you know, like registering the car tips and stuff like that, that, that would be nice. Oh, that one's a tough one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you can, if not, I get yeah. it, but you know, just yeah, yeah. No, like some um, insights. 
I'm going to, I'll have somebody come in who's done it recently because I just hear so many things. In fact, I don't know, most of you are probably on the, the groups and like you may have seen recently the big hubbub about can you register a car as a, if you don't have a residence permit. And the official answer is no. I mean, legally, you're right. not supposed to be able to do that. The unofficial right. answer is yes, of course, people do it all the time and everyone's flipping out about it. So, um, so that's kind of why I hesitate to wade into the car dispute. But uh, let me check around with some people who've recently. Well, well, we'll have residency. So at least we're not trying to do it, you know, off the record. Well, the good news is we now have an office in Fort Morello. So it's become much easier than it was before when we always had to go to Cancun. So I'll get some information on that and get the location of the office. Thanks. Um, what else, guys? What would you like me to cover in the next one that we do about setting up your new home? Okay. Oh, contractors, carpenters, yeah. So that's a good topic. We, we have a list that we can share of kind of handyman type people. Um, it will really depend on the neighborhood that you're in. What And so I suggested that you would join the WhatsApp group and talk to your neighbors and see who they're using. Um, because many of the people who will work, you know, the gardeners, the pool guys, um, even carpenters, they don't have transportation. So sometimes they're, they kind of specialize in a certain neighborhood. Also, one quick thing, can you talk about like, are there um, American contractors, handy people, builders, that kind of thing down there? They predominantly Latins, Mexicans? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, you have to be a Mexican, you have to have a Mexican, you have to have a permit to work in Mexico, you have to be a Mexican company to be a builder, but there are um, foreigners who have set up building companies. Yeah, okay. Is that easy to find out, like just do a little Googling and we'll find some things? Well, if you're in the groups on Facebook, you can ask that question and a lot of people will say who they've used. Okay. Cool. Give references. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So there's um, True Friends of Porter Morelos, Porter Morelos Live, yeah. Rental Homes in Porter Morelos. All those groups have a lot of people that have worked with builders. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Thanks. then if you watch our Ask a Builder series, we have a mm -hmm. local builder that we're, that gives that information. It's, it's in my notes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that's it for me tonight, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank yeah. you. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Good night. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Send me a note mm -hmm. if you think of something later that you want to know about.